three years old, he was a baby, and my eldest son was seven. So goodness knows how long they were being drugged for. Um, but it, it, so seven months for my youngest, five for my eldest, it showed. It was uh, tamazepam, which is a kind of benzodiazepine, which is a sedative, and also a drug called zolpidem which is a very popular date rape drug apparently. It's um, the date rape drug of choice or was at that time. I've not looked into it recently, but when I had a look at that, that drug, when I got the results, it was there was court cases in America about where this had come out of this date rape drug, this basketball player who had been date rape drugging women. And apparently they choose that because it was it, it can enter the body and exit the body very quickly on a your so it, it would be very um, you'd have a very small window for it to show up on a urine test. Obviously with hair, it stains in longer. Obviously it showed up, it showed up in my son's hair. And what was, was it? Point. This is important um, because they yeah. accused you, yeah. it was in the papers, of doing, and your mum, um, of drugging the boys. Yes. But this wouldn't match up with the timeline that you're talking about in terms of the hair growth. Exactly. So what happened then is um, at the end of the court case, the judge had his finding of fact and this was March 2017. He started to read out his judgment and I knew it was going terribly. So I actually fled, I left the room and I ran to hit with my boys. I didn't wait to see what he was saying because I knew I could tell it was going in an absolutely terrible way. Um, so then we're hiding as it's all coming out on the news. And then I find out that, you know, they're, they're trying to hunt us down by putting out that we were, they do it in a very clever way. It's very calculated. So they release you as being a missing person and then they release you as being an abductor. And then once we were then reco recovered, safely found, that's what they call it, when they prized my screaming son away from me in the middle of the night, the other, my other little boy didn't, I was, yeah, anyway, my, that was my eldest son. Um, and, um, and then, oh yeah, and then it was April, and then I get asked into court for, for this family court. I got released without charge because the police released me without charge because I left halfway through the judgment. I didn't know I'd lost custody when I left. So that's right, why I okay. wasn't charged with abducting my own children. I, I want to just put, I'm sorry to keep interrupting, but I know there's some important right. things that we, and I want to kind of back up what you're saying. You weren't charged with drugging the children, which a lot, I, I believe some of the mainstream no, media reported. Arrested. Or arrested. Or oh, arrested. You <laughs> were charged or arrested for drugging the children, which some of the mainstream, I believe, reported at the time you were charged with because you hadn't had you didn't have custody of the children although as you've just said you didn't even know that at that that point so this is again another mixing of the information here absolutely so painting me as a villain and the way these reporters or repeaters as i call them uh, report their information it's shocking so that's without hearing my side it's just the judge read out his uh, summary of events that he wanted to um give the press and then said by the way you're now given a reporting restriction order you're not allowed to report on anything else apart from my findings what that I released to the public um, which was terrible because they accused me of having a false belief system so some some people in my situation are accused of uh, fabricating like you know making the children say certain things I was accused of having a genuine belief that the boys have been dis uh, have been abused but it was irrational and th this is the they call it a false belief system um, and then the judge's bizarre theory was that after uh, after the police investigate after I knew the police investigation would go no further without a sort of corroborative hold on sorry I knew the police investigation would go no further without without a corroborative piece of evidence so then I went on the internet bought date rape drugs and gave them to my children in mid December 2014 so after because we talked about well, it, that that was just three weeks before the boys' hair samples were taken, just to add it into context. Right. So how on earth could all those drugs get all the way to the ends of the boys' hair?